Hey everybody, it's Angelo with Angelo's Workbench. Here with how to build a fully 3D printed kit, we're going to use the beautiful 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse from my friend Andre Bezradny on Colts 3D. You can see um, here in my screen, I am on the website Colts 3D and looking at the many, many vehicles that he offers. And uh, they are all very beautifully done and modeled beautifully and very easy to print. I didn't have any trouble at all. So you'll see here is the Ford Mustang 2024 Dark Horse that we are looking at. Um, this is a kit that may or may not ever be offered by kit manufacturers, but it's out and available in the 3D printing world, as are many subjects that either have never been kitted or probably likely will never be kitted. Uh, a lot of people have been waiting for the new Corvette, and Ravel is finally bringing that out later this year. Well, the new Corvette has been able to be 3D printed, downloaded, and 3D printed for quite some time uh, online. So it just requires a little bit of a different skill set, and I do believe that this could potentially be the future of model building. You know, eventually we might not buy kits at the store. We may download them. We may buy the file. And there's a lot of advantages to this. Um, you know, if you mess up on the body now with a model kit, you know, the body's got to go in the purple pond. Or if it gets really bad, you, you have to source a new body. Um, with 3D printing, you just print another one and you're off to the races. Um, there's also the scalability of parts, which I talk about later in the video. You can change the scale. Now, the nice thing about Andre's files is here, you'll see we have all the scales from 8th scale all the way down to 43rd scale he even has 24th and 25th um, I chose to do it in 24th scale so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and there you'll see all of the files that make up the kit this includes several printing options for the body uh, which I'll discuss again later in the video you can print the body in one piece two piece three pieces because certain 3d printers can print more or less than others uh, then there's also all of the other parts, the chassis, even the interior, there are several options. And again, I discussed that later in the video. Um, the wheels, the tires, the chassis, the parts, everything comes with the kit. Um, and we're kind of a one-stop shopping. But then you can also, um, this particular kit happens to be curbside, but it would be very easy to open that hood, um, 3D print some engine compartment parts, 3D print a awesome ground pounding motor. The 3D printed motors that are available online are amazing. Um, so then what you do is you take the file and you put it into your 3D printing software, and this is what's called a slicing program. This came with my 3D printer. And uh, you'll see I was moving that front end around a little bit, and that's because the body has to be, if there's any gray area, that would be outside of the print area, and you need to move it. What I'm doing now is I'm printing it at an angle. You do that so that it prints better, right? If you have a wide, flat surface, you have run the risk of a, a failed print. And I was just uh, moving it back a little because the tip was dark gray, which means it would have been outside of the print area. So now I'm going to move it up off of the build plate. I do five millimeters. Um, that gives enough room for what's called the raft for the supports and all of the supports to grip onto the part, um, onto the build plate, which is represented by that uh, graph type thing. So now I'm adding in supports. Now my software has a thing that will add automatic supports. So I clicked on the supports, I clicked on add, and then it automatically put all these supports in. However, that really is just a starting point. You'll see there's a large area there that I'm pointing at that have no supports. The area under the wheel well doesn't have any supports. Uh, there aren't a sufficient number of supports under the front end. Um, the adding the additional supports uses a negligible amount of additional resin and you don't want to run the risk of a failed print. If the supports break or if the supports fail to do what they're there to do, then your print will fail, your part will be wobbly, warped, um, and generally unusable, or will require so much refinishing work to, to finish it, to get it to look presentable, um, that it kind of becomes counterproductive. So it's a lot easier add in lots of extra supports. There's no such thing as too many supports. Add in lots of extra supports, um, and, and then your part will print warp-free and issue-free, and it hopefully won't break away from the build plate, because every time you print a layer, every time it cures a layer, there's a tug-of-war that goes on between the build plate and the FEP sheet. The FEP sheet 
is the part at the bottom of the resin reservoir. And the build plate is the metal part that goes up and down on the arm. It comes down into the resin. It gets exposed by to the UV to cure it in whatever pattern it needs to be for that slice. And then it pulls up off of the FEP sheet. And every time it has to stick to the build plate and not the FEP sheet. So the supports help you win that tug of war battle every single time. Uh, so that the parts won't uh, won't come apart from the build plate, fall into the vat, and then stick to the FEP sheet. And then you end up with a big huge glob stuck to the bottom of the um of the FEP, stuck to the FEP sheet and in the vat and not stuck to the build plate where it's supposed to be and funky things happen. So now what I'm doing is I'm noticing that some of those supports um, are kind of hanging out in the gray area. So that support that's gray, that support won't print. It's outside the print area. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to rotate this guy uh, because I've decided like, you know what, I think this would print better sideways and would give a uh, a better result and not have to worry about those supports. So here I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to pick the wrong direction on purpose because I want to show you uh, how movable the part is. You can rotate it any way, 360 degrees in any direction. Um, and then this enables you to position the parts exactly how you want them. Uh, not like that. <laughs> Upside down is a little crazy. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put that back down. Um, the, you can then position the part anyway. So this comes in very handy when you're printing multiple parts, printing small parts, you can go sideways, you can go around, you can go upside down. Um, you can orient the part any way you want, whatever way is easier. You're going to want to orient it away from the detail. You'll see that I have this one oriented so that all the supports are under the bottom of the hood where you won't see them under the bottom where they're easily sandable and removable and the back door line and the rear hood line where again they are easily sandable and again you will not see them i do not have the supports i do not have the part oriented so that the grill and the headlights are face down because then all of your supports would mess up the grill and the headlights and make the front end look very junky and you'll see that um, coming up when i go through all of the parts and all of the things that i learned while 3d printing later in this video you'll see an example of one that i printed um, that was oriented incorrectly, highlighting the importance of orienting your parts correctly. So now it is ready to be sliced. So I have clicked on the slice button and it is slicing this. And we're not going to stay here for the whole thing. It takes about 10, 15 minutes to slice your average part. And what that does is then it saves a file down onto your hard drive and then you would copy that onto a flash drive and take it to the 3d printer and then when you go to the 3d printer it looks like this and you'll see that this is the one that i printed oriented incorrectly where the supports are all in the headlights and the front grill and when i got that off it looked like garbage now let's go to the spray booth and take a closer look at the parts that make up this kit let me share with you some of the things I have learned while 3D printing this model. Now, my 3D printing experience is fairly limited. I've printed wheels and tires and some motors and small parts uh, successfully with a resin 3D printer, and, and I've done okay. This is the first time I've tried to print larger items and a whole kit. And the only reason I was able to is because the person that I got this kit from, who you've seen in the video already, um, is a it offers the body in three pieces or two pieces or just one big piece so you have the option so i'm going to share with you what i've learned this is the first piece that i printed i'm going to move the light um and i printed it orientated like this uh, because you want to print them at an angle so that the resin doesn't take such a the larger a swath of resin that you are carrying at once, the greater a chance for a failed print where the object would uh, stick to the plate, would not stick to the plate, excuse me, would fail to stick to the plate and stick to your FEP screen or MEP screen, whatever it's called. Um, so like something like this, the back windshield, you would never print this flat like this. You would print it in an angle like this, which is exactly what I did. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So one of the things that I did 
is if you'll see, you see how the front of that is real gross, chunky. Um, you don't want your detail parts facing down because that's where all your supports are. And when you take all the supports off, you end up with all of this. So that was a learning experience. So we can toss that. We're not going to use that. So I reprinted it, orientated this way. And now the front is beautiful. And it doesn't matter that I had some supports along here or under here even because you're never going to see that part. And you can sand it smooth and everything is fine. This is the front end that is going on the final car. And you'll see that is very nice, substantially nicer than the other one. And the this 3D model is absolutely outstanding. Uh, he did an excellent job with this. Um, it's going to take a little bit of sanding, as all resin does. And I'm going to deepen these panel lines, as you have to with just about any model kit. But uh, this is golden. So we'll be using that. So then I moved on. I'm going to put that back there. So then I moved on to printing the other two parts of the body. And this is where I learned about the fragility of resin. Uh, as you can see, this one has broken. And it doesn't take much to break it. So you have to be very careful with these things once you print them. Uh, this is the first one that I printed. And I broke it into a million pieces. This has actually been crazy glued back together in like seven places. Um, with a lot of patience. And I could have used this. Um, but I thought better of it. I said, you know what? I'm going to print another one because this is uh, crazy. And I did some Googling and I learned that if you run your resin print under hot water, and I'm going to show you this, if you run your resin print under hot water, like really hot, like you can barely touch it hot and just let it soak in hot water for a few minutes, then all of the supports break off super easy and the part doesn't break. So that was a good lesson. And I did that on this one. And I was able to successfully remove all of the supports. You see the inside um, looks like really nasty on this one. Um, because I was having a hard time getting the supports off. And this kept breaking. Um, this one, there's none of that. Because the supports came off easy peasy using the hot water trick. Um, however, I then broke it later on. Just not being careful. Um, which is my bad but learning experience nonetheless. And then this is the rear end that I printed. This I had no trouble with, printed it up piece of cake. But then I got to thinking, um, how much, how big a print will my printer print? And the answer is my printer, and I had to switch colors because I ran out of that blue resin. Um, and resin lasts a long time, so let me be clear. Uh, my 3D printer will print uh, up to almost the entire body. I, if I tried to print the entire body at once, I would miss just like the nose. But I have a larger 3D printer on the way. I've already purchased it. It's on the way. And it can print entire model bodies, no problem. And not only that, it can also print substantially quicker than my current printer. So I'm moving up um, because I think that this is going to be a thing in the future. And I plan on buying a lot of these resin model kits because um, they're awesome. Um, so I was able to... Even though I was able to successfully print the rear end, I was like, hey, let me try and see if I can do it. And it is done. Then I don't have to worry about gluing and, and uh, body filling that seam. You can see I would have to do putty work and everything on that. And I could, and it would look good when I was done, I'm sure. Um, it's just a lot more work. Whereas this, I just printed it up in one piece. I was excited to see that this would print all in one shot on my printer. And I did it all no problem first print and um i uh, was able to remove with the hot water remove all the supports no problem without breaking anything and that is good this one also handily also has the shark fin antenna on top whereas the multiple piece one didn't i suspect because the seam is where the shark fin would go so i had printed separately the shark fin and he gives you all kinds of options as you've seen in the uh in the video uh, as to how you want to print this. Uh, all different options, all different sections, like the interior tub, for example. Um, I chose to print the interior tub as one piece because I can do the detail work on that side door just fine, and I didn't want to have to put it all together, but he offers the back seat, the bottom, the center console, the doors, the rear package shelf, all as separate pieces that you can then glue together and use in your model, or just print the tub all in one. My model can, my, my printer can print something that large, and, and that printed up just fine. Easy peasy, no problem. 
So, um, so let me get these body parts out of here. And we'll talk more about the other parts. Let's talk some more. You know what? I'm going to get these body parts out of here as well. Because I don't want to break them. Put them over there. They seem to be very sturdy thus far. But So, um, so then I have printed the, uh, the dashboard, which is looking good. I'm going to move you in a little closer now that we're talking about smaller parts. Um, the dashboard is nice. Um, there is no gauge uh, decals or anything, obviously. you got to come up with your own. So, um, and this car obviously has one of those big, huge flat panel. So I'm going to find a really cool looking flat panel dashboard and appropriate it off the internet and print a decal and stick it on there and then do my regular detailing. And then here is the steering wheel, which looks quite awesome. I'm going to come up with a Mustang logo decal for that center from somewhere, either my decal stash, or maybe I can find some online. Um, but uh, there's the steering wheel and, and that all, everything fits um, beautifully. Uh, here is the rear spoiler that is going to go on the car, which is nice. Here is the front chin spoiler, which also is uh, came out very nice. Um, all the parts are modeled exceptionally well, I have to say. So then uh, here are the tires, and these are resin-printed 3D tires, and I've used resin-printed 3D tires before. Um, you can print them out of, there is a rubbery material that they sell, um, but you know, when you paint these flat black, it looks the same to me. So, and I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here. I don't care if, uh, if they, uh, if they're real rubber or not, because once I paint the wheel and paint the, uh, tires flat black, you know, you'll be fine. Uh, notice there are no center caps in the wheels. I printed those separately and they are super tiny. So they are here inside this tape. Uh, so that I do not lose them. He does have the option, again, to print the wheels with the center caps intact, but I wanted to do uh, like silver center caps. I wanted them to be a contrasting color from the wheel, and um, having it as a separate part uh, is very easy. Uh, there are 3D printed wheels that I have downloaded and printed where everything is a separate part. The spokes are a separate part. The barrel is a separate part. So you can paint the wheel and detail the wheel more easily, come up with these beautiful wheels um, because there's so many multiple parts. Um, so those are the, the wheels and tires, which, uh, which are awesome looking. Uh, and then we have, uh, oh, let me talk about the chassis before we go to that. So the chassis is another part that, um, he offers in two pieces or one piece. And I printed it in two pieces the first time, just because I didn't think that I could print it. Um, and it would seam together and I would, uh, probably epoxy some metal on here to give it some structural rigidity and, and this would work fine. It's, it's beautifully detailed on the bottom, um, with some, uh, stuff that you could do some carbon fiber, you could do some aluminum, you could do some whatever. And then it has the little, little things for the, um, for the exhaust pipes to, uh, to, to glue onto. And, uh, and those are hollow all the way through 3d printed hollow all the way through, which is really cool. Um, glue those on, do those like a polished tip. That's going to look great. But then I thought, got to thinking again, when I was able to successfully print the whole back of the body, this is flat. And the only part I was losing on the body was the little tiny part of the top. Because this is flat, I could 3D print the whole thing in one piece. And I did. So, so I'm going to use the, the body, the, the chassis, the undercarriage in, uh, in one piece. And then these are the things that hold the wheels and they glue right there. And, and you can, you these are adjustable. You can set your stance, um, how far in or out you want them. And then I would assume that I could very easily put a little strip styrene in there and uh, lower the car as well. It's so adjustable. Um, the way this is very simple, very simplistic design, but very effective. Um, I really like the way he did this whole thing, the way he modeled this car. Uh, it's going to go together uh, very easily, and uh, and hopefully I'm going to have an excellent looking finished product. But uh, I've got four of those, one for each of the wheels, obviously. And then we also have some brake discs, because you will be able to see through the wheel. So we have some cool brake discs, and we have some cool brake calipers. I ended up with five just because I put one extra on the build sheet just in case, because um, small parts like this, it never hurts to have an extra one. Um, so, so I've got the brake calipers, so you can very easily do the brake calipers in a different color, put them on the rotors, and you know, you've got a very nice looking um, brake package uh, sticking out behind that wheel. So that'll be nice. Um, the other thing I've got here that we haven't talked about yet is the tail lights. Um, here are the tail lights, and they will be, uh, should be fairly easy to detail, do the black and then the red tail light 
uh, portion and then these just recess into the uh, rear body so that makes them easier to paint got a couple of side view mirrors here that will of course they'll either be black or body color i haven't decided yet i have to look at some pictures of the car i haven't seen many pictures of the 2024 dark course so um so i will get to uh, doing a little bit of research on that and deciding what color i want to do and how i want them to look and these are the seats the seats um printed up excellent and they have uh, excellent side detail and I, I noticed that the detail is the same on both sides so it doesn't really matter like which is driver which is passenger and you've got the holes here if you want to do some five point belts uh that would be very easy to do um the seats just they look amazing they have a nice texture to them even off the resin 3d printer i'm gonna have to do some sanding on the back because i have some because they printed like this because I wanted the supports to be where you don't see. You always want the supports where you don't see because it saves you on sanding and filling and everything. Um, and uh, and I will still fill them and sand them and make them look nice, but uh, it's nice to have this. It's easier to work on this surface uh, than it would be to work on this surface because you got the seat bottom here and that's a pain. Uh, so there's the seats. Seats look great. Uh, the glass. So you'll notice that the glass is not clear is because I printed it in the black in the in the black resin there um and that is because um I bought clear resin and I tried with clear resin and uh, I can't get the clear resin to work so I, I think it's because I bought some no-name clear resin um I'm gonna try to maybe get some any cubic photo resin but most of this glass is almost flat and so I printed them anyway because I can use them as a template. I save clear packaging from packages in case I have to replace a kit windshield. Um, I can just make a windshield out of kit, you know, fine. And that for the for the front, I would do that. Uh, for the sides and the back, uh, I may just tint them, you know. And these are quite handily um, already kind of tinted. They're they're semi see through, but not really. Um, but what I would do is I would uh, I would wet sand these and give them a gloss coat to give them a, a shiny finish like glass. Um, but uh, but we'll see. I, I, the jury is still out as to what I'm going to do with the windows, um, whether I cut and make my own or whether I uh, do something else. And, and the same thing goes for the headlight covers. The headlight covers um, are, are molded here. And the last thing I wanted, I don't want to cover up that beautiful headlight detail. So if I can't reproduce these in clear, these headlight covers, I simply won't use them. I'll leave them off. Um, I don't know what that is. It's, uh, I think it might be the backup lens for the reverse light. Um, so I'm not sure, but we'll find out. So those are all the parts. That's the trials and tribulations that I had as I've gone through this 3D printing process. I've learned a lot and, uh, and was able to successfully print all of the parts for this kit. So we're going to get to work painting them and assembling them so we can have our 2024, uh, excuse me, our 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse uh, ready to be displayed. So stay tuned. There was a couple other things that I wanted to mention that I forgot to mention. And that is, even though you can print these parts very easily, um, parts management is still important. So I use a Ziploc bag to keep them uh, safe and, and ready to go until they make it to the uh, plastic bin that I use to hold the kits that I'm building. Um, and the nice thing is, if you do have a problem with a part, and say you break a part or, uh, or whatever, um, you can just print another one. You don't have to write a letter to Revell or to the model company and wait for new ones to ship. Also, the same thing is true like with these wheels and tires. You say, hey, I like these wheels. They're just not big enough. They don't look big enough. Uh, you can scale them up very easily and you scale the wheel up to a size and scale the tire up to a size the inside equals the outside and then you can you you could basically make the wheel any size you want so for guys that are into stancing and lowering this stuff is perfect you can make these wheels any size you want make these tires any size you want just with some simple adjustments in your 3d printing software when you're when you're slicing the print up and off you off you go you can have big wheels you can have little wheels um low rider guys you want to take a nice set of wire spokes and create like 14 inch wires something small and really cool looking um you can do that same thing with the tires you can scale up the tires um the only thing you can't do really is make them uh like like thicker they'll they'll stay the same ratio in order to make them thicker you got to get into the cad software um, but uh, but I wouldn't need to do that. I would just uh, scale them up larger 
if I wanted to. I think these look good on the body, the size that they are, so I don't plan on scaling them, but you could. I wanted to add that. So let's get to work. Okay. So just as an example, this is what a 3D print looks like when it comes off of the printer. This is the, um, the front spoiler, the um, that rear light that I don't know what it is. One of the headlight covers and the other headlight cover failed on this print. Um, they do that sometimes. I probably need to change my FEP screen. So what you have to do is just kind of pry these off. And your three, My 3D printer came with this little metal spatula. Um, and then you need to clean everything off a little bit. And how we do that is with some spray alcohol. And you just give it a, a spray. And then uh, just a wipe with some paper towels is fine. Um, I use microfiber only on the FEP screen, but for the metal parts and whatnot, a uh, paper towel is uh, fine. It's handy to have the paper towel ready to go before you pull it off of the printer which I often forget. Okay, so there is the build plate. And now that can go back onto the 3D printer. Quite handily. And so now let's clean one of these parts. Let's take this one for example. So I'm gonna spray this with the alcohol front top and bottom so that it's not so messy when I take it to the sink and run it in the hot water. All right. Okay. And there you can see the support and the support plates. Um, and all of the supports and you'll see how I printed it at an angle. Uh, because you don't want to have a large flat surface because you increase the chance of a, a failed print it coming off of the plate so there's that now we just got to get all these supports now if you just start cutting these supports now you will prop you could likely break this so the hot water trick works marvelously uh, let's go to the bathroom okay i've had this water running for quite a few minutes now so it's getting kind of hot which is good that's what we want now I'm just going to run the hot water on the supports. Heat them up. And then just give it a little push. And I am pushing off of the supports. And there it is. Removed. The hot water makes it so much easier and no damage. This you can throw away. You don't need those. And just to show you what, uh, this is the one from when I printed the chassis. You can see all the supports and they all came off super easy. And so that is how you remove them from the supports without breaking them. The hot water trick. And there it is. That's going to wrap up video number one in the how to 3D print an entire kit with the beautiful 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse. Go ahead and click that like and subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Hit that bell. Make sure you get notified when I post new content. Also, see me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, all under Angelo's Workbench for additional content not shown here. Tune in next week for video number two. We'll get to work painting and putting this together.